Sierra here from Go The Distance Coaching. So glad to see you. Um, so you bought the $2,000 plus tri bike, the wetsuit, the Garmin, the gym membership, the registration fee for your Ironman branded event. You are totally ready to do this. You may have even bought a, bought a coach. I mean, you've spent a lot of money, right? So now you're hearing that a power meter is something that you're supposed to have. Um, if this is a question that's come up for you and you're just not sure if it's really for you, um, spending yet more money on this little hobby is not quite what you had in mind, and you're not sure if this is really going to be worth it for you, then I'm glad that you're watching this. I want to address this, and I invite you to contact me if you have questions that are still kind of bouncing around in your mind and you just can't make up your mind. So, you know, if all the cool kids have got this, but it's another $1,000, do you, is it really worth it for you? Not just in general, but is it worth it for you? So that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit. I want to cover three things. First of all, what does a power meter do that the Garmin and the heart rate monitor strap that you already paid for don't? Um, and how will you use the numbers? Or And will anyone care what they are? That's really important. And three, so what is the cost anyway? So uh, there's some ideas about how much a power meter costs, and I want to expand on that a little bit because there may be options out there that you just don't know about because they're not as popular as what your friends have, but they're there are some budget options out there that are still high quality. So number one, you know, what is, what is a power meter all about? So um, as a coach, I love it when my clients have a power meter because it gives me really good numbers for exactly how hard they're working on the bike, regardless of terrain, regardless of wind speed, regardless of how overheated they were, nothing. It's just exactly how much power are you putting into the pedals every second exactly at that moment. So if you're monitoring mainly heart rate, it lags. It, you, you can notice this if you do, say, a really short, sharp effort, um, a really quick hill, um, a 10 second effort on your trainer that was very hard. You can see that in that 10 seconds, your heart rate doesn't really change that much. It might take a while and um, maybe even as you're resting after that effort, you might see it continue to go up. So the heart rate is not going to be like this instantaneous measure of how hard you're working, really for any sport. Um, but what's wonderful about cycling is that we can use wattage. Now you can use wattage for running as well. It's not really as understood um, and easy to use as it is for cycling because this we've had for decades. Um, and it's only now becoming much more affordable. So it's getting to be more widely used. And you'll see power meters on every pro cyclist uh, bike. And they're all, they're all looking at these numbers now. So, you know, if you want to do interval work on the trainer and you want to know exactly how hard to work, you know, not too easy, not too hard for whatever given time you're going to be doing it, and you want to see how that's progressing from month to month, wattage is a wonderful way to do that. That's how I first got introduced to it, is I wanted to see if I just did this kind of same interval set over and over again, how was I going to see it improving? And there's definitely much more nuance to it that you can get into. And if you have a coach or you're using a coaching, coaching system, um, that will already be built into your training plan. And so you don't even have to think about what to do. It's just going to help you to progress using that, that wattage meter. Um, so, uh, and the other thing that I love is if it's a super windy day and you're out there and you're working super hard, the watt is just going to prove how hard you worked, uh, even though your speed doesn't. You know, you're going eight miles an hour to this massive headwind, but you're still putting out hundreds of watts. You can show your friends, see, I was still working really hard, even though your speed was slow. So it's a great qualitative measure of instantaneous work that you're doing on the bike. It's a great tool for cyclists. Now, Let's take a look at who you are as a person and if you have a coach or not and what kind of coach you have. So if you are not into numbers, if that is just not your thing, you don't want to be looking at numbers while you're riding, you don't want to look at numbers afterwards, you don't have a coach, this is not going to be a good investment for you because you're going to spend money to collect data that you don't care about. So I wouldn't do it. If you like numbers, if they help you to stay focused on your workout, if you love to see the progression happening on those trainer workouts, if you want to have an idea of how hard should you be working in your races and you want to learn how to pace really evenly all the way through your bike leg, this is an incredible tool. And if you have a coach who wants you to work with wattage, they will be ecstatic if you have a watt meter because it will make their job so much easier because then we'll be able to tell exactly what you did and how well you stuck to the workout. 
how well you paced. They can use wattage from one race to guide their decision about how you should race another one. It's just an amazing tool for a coach who can't be stand over you all the time and, and tell you what to do and wants to know instantaneously what exactly you were doing. So they have an idea of how you think of your pacing, um, and how much attention you're paying to what you're doing and what happens to you on different terrain. It's a great tool. But again, no coach, you hate numbers, don't buy one. Hands down, feel good about it, just walk away, don't worry about it. All right, so uh, number three, what does it cost? There are so many options, all right? In the old days, all we had was um, SRM. It costs a fortune. It was in integrated into your crank. Unfortunately, I have one of these old school ones, and when the battery goes dead, which mine is on the verge of doing, I have to take the crank apart, put the whole thing in a box, and send it away to someone to put a new battery in. This is not convenient. So many of the, the power meters now, they have a little coin uh, watch battery that goes in that you can find at the grocery store and you can change yourself. Super easy. They can be in your crank arm. They can be in your pedals. They can be, again, still in your spindle, but easier to deal with. Um, there are also ones that are in the hub. So if you are not mechanically inclined, but you really want to use your power meter on two different bikes, you need to just swap the wheel from one bike to the next and you're ready to go. Uh, so there are a lot of options. There are a lot of price options as well. Recently was at um, a big uh, conference for uh, bike makers and we saw power meters everywhere from 250, which was only for like engineer types, to in the 400s, um, which again was um, kind of uh, homemade, but it looked reliable, seemed to be a good company. It's been around for a long time, all the way up to again, those SRMs in the, two, in the 2000s and higher range. So you can definitely do really well between about $500 and $1,000 now, whereas that used to be nowhere near getting anywhere near a power meter. The very cheapest one you could imagine was $2,000, which might cost more than the bike you were riding. So there are more affordable options. I mean, obviously it's not the same as just going and getting a little cat eye for 65 bucks and slapping it on there, um, but they are much easier to use much more affordable than they used to be. And there's another option as well. If you don't want to have a power meter on your bike, um, you can get a power trainer like a Wahoo Kicker or Snap. Um, and these are really interesting. Um, the downside is when you get out onto the road, say for a race, you're not going to have any watt information. So you may have used it all the way through your indoor training, but it won't help you on race day, except in that you've learned what your correct wattage might feel like. But when you're indoors and you're training on that trainer, it is going to kick your butt because not only does it know what wattage you should be putting out, and this is information that you can use on your own power meter, if you have that trainer, it's going to force you to get to that wattage. So if you have programmed it, it's not going to let you slack off. Like You're really going to have to do the work. It won't be just up to you to make sure that the, the numbers that you're actually putting out and the numbers that it thinks you should be doing are matching but it will force you to match them. So it can really kick your butt. It can be your own little coach there in Zwift or Trainer Road or whichever uh, app you wanna use. Um, that can be a really fun tool. If you know you need to be on your trainer through the winter, but you don't like the trainer, um, getting on Zwift or Trainer Road, either with your power meter or with your power trainer can be a great way to make those rides fun. And you can even do the rides with friends each of you from your own living room, you know, on the opposite sides of the earth, you can ride together in the virtual, the virtual landscape there. So that's pretty fun. So if you want to be a better cyclist, uh, stronger, better able to pace yourself, more aware of the effort that you're putting out in, out on the road, this power meter can be an amazing tool, especially with some guidance about what numbers you're looking for and what to look for to know that you're progressing. This can be a terrific investment in yourself. So um, I hope you will consider it. If you need some help um, looking into specific power meter options, knowing which one to buy, or knowing how to use power and training, I invite you to contact me for a free 30-minute consult. You can hit the uh, message me uh, button anywhere on this page or um, my email in the, the description. All right, great talking with you guys. I hope you have an awesome Thanksgiving, and I will see you right back here next Wednesday. Take care.